Okay, I've got a new setup here. Uh, I think I still need to work on some things. I need to work on the audio. I think the lighting's a little bit better, but I definitely have a better setup. Um, I mentioned something about a board, but let's just get into it. Okay, so what is the center of mass and what is the center of gravity? Uh, so first of all, let me remind you about torque. And this is the brief introduction to torque. Uh, I'll put a link down below, but uh, we define torque about some point as it is a, technically a vector. The most, the best definition is going to be R cross F, where that's a cross product, but we don't want to deal with that too complicated right now. So the magnitude of the torque is going to be the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of the angle between R and F, where R is the uh, the vector from the point of rotation, the point where you want to calculate the torque, to the force. Okay, so that's torque. Now, what about center of mass? So let's just define, suppose I have these four masses, and, and they're different. See, I drew them different, so you can tell they're different. So I have M1, 2, 3, and 4, and they're at different locations, X1, 2, 3, and 4. So I can, def let me first of all define the center of mass and show you where uh, that comes from, really. It comes from torque. Okay, so if I say uh, the x center of mass, and this is in one dimension, uh, but we could do it in multiple dimensions. Uh, I'll write it this way. It's the sum over i of mi xi divided by, um, technically, it'd be the sum of mi over i. So this says, and if I have four masses, it would look like this. It says take the mass, multiply it by its x value, and then add them all up. So this would be x1, m1, oh, I switched that around, plus m2, x2, plus m3, what's the edge? Hmm. Okay, right over here. x center mass equals m1, x1, plus m2, x2, plus m3, x3, plus m4, x4, all that over m1 plus m2 plus m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4. And that's it. Now you notice here that uh, I have mass times distance on the top and mass on the bottom, so I get units of distance, which I should. Uh, if some of these are negative values, that's okay. You can do that. Um, this is the same as calculating a weighted grade. So I like to include this because often students will say, I just don't know how to calculate my grade. Uh, if the tests are 30% and the homework is 10% and the quizzes are, let's see, 30, 10, 60%, then how do, if I know my averages on all those, how do I do it? It's the same thing here. Use the... Uh, the the weighted average, right? So you're taking the values, your averages times the weight. Uh, so if it's 30%, it'd be 0.3 times your score there, plus 0.6 times the score and so forth. So it's the same thing. Okay, so this is defined as the X center of mass. Now let's do uh, another problem with these same masses. Okay, so what I wanna do is to calculate the torque about this point, that's my origin, due to these four masses, and they all have a gravitational force acting on them. So if I draw that, I have, let me just draw these arrows. They're all different arrows, but. So the, the net torque is gonna to be, first of all, the angle between the R values and the forces are always 90 degrees, and the sine of 90 is one, so we don't have to worry about that. So I can just find the torque due to this one as its X position multiplied by mass times gravity for the weight. So I can say torque net O. Oh, also, are these positive or negative torques? It doesn't really matter, but let me just go over that. So remember, if the way torque is a vector, it would be, this torque would be actually into the paper, and so it'd actually be a negative torque. Um, it doesn't really matter, though. Okay, so I'm going to put it as negative just to be uh, as correct as possible. So I get the torque due to this one's going to be negative x1 times its weight m1g. And then I can do the other ones and I get negative x2 
m2g, negative x3, m3g, negative x4, m4g. Of course, I can factor out the g. So I get, I'll put negative g times x1, m1, plus x2, m2, plus x3, m3, plus x4, m4. And you might see that looks a little familiar, right? Okay, now that's the net torque due to the four individual masses. But now let's say I have my same system right here. And here's that point O. And I want to replace all these masses with just one mass right there. And I'll call it M total, where M total is M1 plus M2 plus M3 plus M4. That's the total mass. Now, where would I put that mass such that it has the exact same torque as the individual torques added up? So I want to have one value that has the same position here. So let's call this, as you can see, x center mass. So I'm going to say the torque due to this is going to be equal to, that has a gravitational force, torque net O is going to be negative x center mass m total g. And that has to be equal to all of this, which I'm going to run out of room. That's fine. Negative g m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 plus m4 x4. The g's cancel, the negatives cancel, and I solve for x center mass as you got it, m1 x1 plus m2. I should have only had like three masses, don't you think? Because it would have been a lot easier. x2 plus m3 x3 plus m4 x4. All that divided by the total mass. I'll just write that as m total. And there you go, the center mass. The center mass, this is actually not the center mass. This is the center of gravity. This is a pretty big deal, okay? Don't just think, oh, it's center mass, no big deal. No, it's a big deal because let's say I have a board, a diving board, and I'm going to do this problem really quickly, but not right now. And I have it supported by these supports right here. If it's a uniform density, then I have actually three forces acting on this. I have this one uh, actually pulls down. I call that N1. N2, and then where do I put the gravitational force? The location of that force matters. The answer is everywhere. Gravity acts on all parts of this board, and so I can't draw one force. However, according to this, I could, instead of drawing an, you know, inf a near infinite number of gravitational forces on all the little atoms, I could put one point, the center mass, and pretend like the gravitational force is acting just at that one point, M total, uh, G, where this is the center of mass, which would be in the center of its uniform density. Okay, so that's what this says. This says that that location, the center mass, is the place that I could put a single gravitational force and still get the same torque. That's key. Um, this assumes something rigid objects. Okay, because imagine that this was a piece of jello and I tried to support it. It would bend and stuff. And so putting just one single force in there wouldn't completely model the whole situation. But we're not going to deal with situations like jello because it's super complicated. Okay, but rigid objects are better and easier to deal with. And of course, a diving board's not rigid. It will bend, but uh, good enough. Okay, so Key point, the center mass is the center of gravity, not always. I'm going to show you in the next video when the center mass is not equal to gravity, but the center of gravity. But uh, this allows us to place one single gravitational force on a rigid object. Okay. Oh, I, I do want to write one thing. Uh, the 
center of mass in multiple dimensions, r center mass is equal to the sum over of i, ri vector mi over m total. So that there is a vector formula for that too. So you can find the, the center mass in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction, uh, and that's that. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'm excited about the next video. It's going to be super great. It's going to be, what is the difference between when is the center of mass not equal to the center of gravity? I'll talk to you guys later.